Okay. Okay. You, do you want to hear how it's been like after the COVID-19, you mean? Yeah. Is that the question? Yeah, let me, let me say who we are first. Yeah. This, this, this is... Uh, <laughs> All uh, right. I'm, I'm Vance. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm Vance in, in Malaysia, okay. Vance Stevens. All right, uh, and mm -hmm. I'm Susan. That's actually, it's a Persian name. I mean, Susan, say it is, Susan Marandi, but Susan Marandi for, I mean, in English, it's easier to say, say it that way. So Susan mm -hmm. from Iran, Tehran. I'm at Azahar University in Tehran. Mm -hmm. And uh, with regard to your question about how it's been uh, ever since COVID-19, what happened is that, well, all the schools and universities were shut down and um, everybody had to resort to e-learning. So um, I have my classes online. Um, we have like uh, use Adobe Connect and uh, or some also some like Iranian um, venues like Skyroom and VRoom and things like that for mm -hmm. like the synchronous sessions. For the asynchronous sessions, uh, it's something like very similar to Moodle, a kind of like LMS. Of course, I mean, it differs from university to university, but you know, generally speaking, I guess like we're all doing more or less the same thing. So our classes have been held online. And for the schools, they also have like some additional um, additional courses being taught via like national television. So like mm -hmm. there's one channel, it's called the educational channel, which is like devoted, dedicated to education. Mm -hmm. And they have a very regular program for like those students who might not have access to internet or, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So basically everything is online. And of mm -hmm. course, uh, since, well, some professors and some students aren't really uh, still very well like used to it, mm -hmm. uh, the, they've had lots of um, workshops and lots of, um, you know, like vid sending video clips, kind of like uh, tutorials and stuff like that to help the professors. So mm -hmm. uh, the good thing was, I mean, for me, I didn't have to really participate in any of those. I could just like go straight to work and that was a plus. Mm -hmm. But of course, I've been like helping out other people a bit, you know, trying to help them get used to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And well, um, luckily, I mean, call is really like very important now. So mm -hmm. you know, that's mm -hmm. really good. Yeah. yeah. I, I told you last time I was able to make the meeting that um, this uh, master's degree in call has been approved. Well, that was, of course, actually before COVID-19. I mean, it had like, it. I just mm -hmm. finished getting it approved. And then this like, uh, this whole thing occurred. We don't have students yet because, um, well, we have a, um, an annual college entrance exam, university entrance exam. Mm -hmm. So like the students have to participate in that and we'll have, hopefully we'll have students next year. Um, but um, I'm hoping that uh, with you know all this uh, like COVID-19 and uh, like the con um, confinement and the problems that people have had uh, there will be like more excitement about you know this new master's degree. Mm -hmm. Well okay so just going through some of the things you mentioned mm -hmm. uh, right. let's see you, you say you're not in you're not in, you don't have students right now. Oh I do sure oh, at the okay. university university students right. Uh -huh. Okay yeah and you're in your office right now? Um, no, actually, right now I'm at home. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I teach from home. I mean, all our classes are online. And mm -hmm. so, like, I don't really go to the university very much. Of course, I'm, like, the chair of the department, the English department. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, I might occasionally visit the university. But since, like, most of the meetings and classes and all the, all the work, you know, I mean, everything is done through the Internet. So mm -hmm. uh, I haven't actually been to the university I, I, I guess only once, like over the past two months, maybe. Mm -hmm. So like, um, I've been working from home over the last few months. Bobby, Susan is here. Do you remember Bobby? Of course. <laughs> yes, of course. Hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, nice to see you. Nice, nice to see you. See you. We were just, how are you doing? Just good, good. I was just on Skype to the boys for mm -hmm. Mother's Day. and Right. Now, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. Well, congratulations, you know, on Mother's Day, right? Thank you, mm -hmm. thank you. And now I'm checking all the windows because it's uh, raining. Big it's rainstorm <laughs> coming in, big event tonight. All right, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, nice to see you. It was really nice to see you too. Take care. Yeah. Bye, okay. you too. Bye. Bye.
Yeah. So okay. So when did you go? When did you start sheltering in place? Or when did when did, when when did the university start? Um, uh, well, like we had the first we had the first instances of COVID nineteen, the first confirmed ones. About let me tell you how many months ago. Mm -hmm. Um, it was about like three and a half months ago, approximately. Uh -huh. And so, so like, February. yeah, yeah. So it was like, um, and then it started like increasing pretty rapidly. So like, mm -hmm. um, they like after, um, this like become, you know, a bit like more widespread and people started like worrying about what was going to happen. Uh, they just like, uh, announced that the, um, all the schools and the universities would be um, like, um, well, not really shut down, but like, you know, everything would be online. Mm -hmm. So the first few weeks, so that's like, as I said, about like maybe three, and three and a half. And when did that start? When, uh, did when the classes, almost mm -hmm. immediately. Well, there were like a couple of, okay. a, a couple of weeks delay because like there were still like lots of professors and students who didn't really know how to use online classes. Mm -hmm. So uh, like the, um, we had like a few weeks of intensive workshops and courses mm -hmm. like online for mm -hmm. those professors and students who didn't know how to use like technology mm -hmm. like for their teaching and learning. Uh, but like, well, after that they started. So there wasn't like much of a delay, maybe like a few weeks, like two or three weeks of so delay. So you're talking about late February, early March, something like that? Uh, yeah, I guess. Yes, I mean, let me see. It was in okay. If you want to know, if you really want to know I'd more accurately, I'd have you know. to check. Okay, oh, but okay. it was like um, about I can say like a, about three three months ago, almost exactly three months ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was like when when we were first told that the universities and um, schools would be mm -hmm. temporarily shut down, and about like a week. I mean, the end of the same week, like after mm -hmm. one week of their being shut down they announced that the classes would be held online because there was no sign of the um, virus letting up. Mm -hmm. And so like after like one week of like having everything shut down, they announced this. Okay. Then there were like two, maybe three weeks of intensive workshops and classes mm -hmm. and stuff like that mm -hmm. online. And then like everybody got back to work online. And mm -hmm. so ever since everything has been more or less online. So that would have been in February. Uh, yeah, I guess. Three months ago, mid February, right. something like that. Yeah, we're in May right now, right? We're in May, yeah. First right. week of okay. May. Yeah. So that means that in March, about March, mm -hmm. you went completely online the first of right. March. Right. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay. I was in, I only think I was in Thailand and, well, in January, actually. Yeah, uh, I think Thailand, I mean, things were better. Uh, I mean, so perhaps you didn't have much of a problem. Right. Well, they did. And in they, Malaysia, they closed they their did? schools oh. probably about the middle of March. I see. In Malaysia, I think our uh, shutdown order was on March 18th. I can remember it well because on March 17th, I went for a long hike <laughs> to try to oh. get in under it, <laughs> which was a good right. thing because most of my friends yeah. were in the supermarkets crowding around, you know, just right. trying to buy all the toilet paper they could. Uh -huh. I never could understand that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> oh, I, I went out in the mountains, and uh, uh, that was really nice. That's then, a great idea. Yeah, great it was idea. almost empty out there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but that but meanwhile, I was teaching uh, an online class, and oh, that class right. ended March 11th, actually. So, uh, but uh, people at that time, and, I, and the class was kind of based in Thailand, and they were. Um, people in the in the class they weren't all from thailand but they were all starting to shut down about that time and i see the class became very important just like your doctor exactly. your, your master's program mm -hmm. uh my class was a course on blended learning which i taught mm -hmm. in thailand for two right. weeks right um so i was teaching about blended learning in a blended learning exactly. environment okay that was exactly the same experience i had yeah so then they asked me to do it online or do, you know, do consultancy. Right. They called it consultancies. So all of a sudden, now I, I had to take the whole thing online, and which I did. Right. Uh -huh. uh, I had a little chat with Jeff LeBeau during this. And I, oh, you remember right. Jeff? How is he? Yeah. He's in Korea. And okay. as you know, he's quite, everything he does is blended. So 
he yeah. told me that when they had their shutdown, which must have been about the first of March, so he that could probably in February, something like that. Then um, he said, well, for him, it was quite easy. He just, um, uh, he'd already, all his classes were blended. He just had to add Zoom is what he said. So basically, exactly. but he was, right. uh, since he was set up in a blended environment to begin with, yeah, uh, it just, you know, if you have to go online, well, you're, you've got to exactly. lay up for everybody else who have to, has to learn sure. all the blended yeah, techniques. Yeah, right. I actually had um, two classes for this term. One was language assessment. Um, and the other one is a, a call course for my PhD students. And so, I mean, they're really having a blast because, I mean, the whole class is online. And they mm -hmm. some of them didn't really know that much. I mean, they all of them use technology for, like, their everyday lives and for, like, mm -hmm. just learning, you know. But um, they didn't really know that much about how to use them for teaching and, you know, how to use them, like, for, you know, language learning and language teaching. So for them, it's very um, exciting. I mean, all of a sudden, everything is online. We're like, they're so, uh, they're like totally immersed. Oh, hi, Lane. Okay. Hi. I have to tell you, Susan, time. I've been having such a Suzanne. Suzanne. Uh huh. How do you, okay. You Susan is fine, but yeah, Suzanne. Yeah, it's Suzanne, but Susan is fine. But thank you for making the effort. That's cool because in, uh, also in Arab countries, it's the same. You know, they're I see. Suzanne is right. So, yeah. but, but because your name is spelled like what Susan and everyone has called you Susan. But anyway, it's Suzanne. So right. We'll Suzanne. try. We'll do our best. <laughs> make you oh, that's fine. I mean, I was born Suzanne. in the states. Yeah. I was born in the States, so like I, I'm used to hearing people call me Susan, Susan yeah. because actually it's the same word. I mean, Susan is the flower, which is like Susan in English. So, I mean, that's either one is fine, but I appreciate, you know, the way you are always very culturally sensitive to everything. Hi, mm -hmm. Mike. Hi, Lane. Hi. Yeah, and I'm sorry. For, well, I was apologizing for keeping you waiting. I don't know if you were waiting in the waiting room for any time. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. I was a bit early. I mean, I'm always late. And so this time I'm a, I was a bit early, so no problem. Yeah. Actually, before, um, I mean, I have a confession to make. I have classes in like three minutes, which is why I was. Uh -oh. Yeah. So you can just do <laughs> them in another window. Well, I don't think that that's going to work, but <laughs> Wait, I just wanted to Is it Sunday? Is it Sunday? It's Sunday, uh, right? Yeah, but you see, it, Sunday is a working day, day in Iran, you know? I mean, it's a weekday. It's a working day. Yeah, first yeah it's a week weekday. in UAE as well. Yeah. Right. Saturday, Sunday. In, uh, in Iran, in Iran, Saturday, Thursdays Friday, and Fridays are um, like weekends. Of course, Thursdays, like kind of half, you know, half of the day is off. And then Friday is like the, you know, we're fully off it's like you know hmm. the end of the um, so this is so, not a great time for you no actually that's one of the reasons i i was like very careful to be here on time because i wanted to ask if we could occasionally like move the meeting a bit you know move it around a bit because this way i'll be missing it every single week you know I mean, oh yeah nothing i can do about it even like i don't know like half an hour earlier couple of hours later maybe another day occasionally just once in a while could do that that's... could start it half an hour earlier and then all right that way i could be here for like about like 40 okay. minutes you know 40 45 Suzanne, minutes just for you <laughs> that's so you're so awesome okay <laughs> now <laughs> so i'm i'm really sorry to just like you know say hi and run but i have to go and get to my class um thank you so much vance and lane and mike it was really wonderful to see you guys so if, if you want us to visit your class let us know because your class meets when we meet that would be awesome that would yeah. be awesome okay. yeah yeah could, i might i might do that sometime we'd be All happy right. to join them that would be wonderful. Okay. You All right. Could do that one time. Or no, wait, you're, you're, that you're, would be really exciting. Adobe Connect, you said. What? You're using oh, Adobe Connect. Oh, yeah, Adobe Connect. Connect. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I use, that's right. what I use. I use Adobe okay. also. When I that do. is a great yeah. idea. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, I was just wondering, though, because actually the call class that I have, I mean, right now the class I have now is not a call class. I'm taking French classes, okay? Mm -hmm. But the call class, the PhD class mm -hmm. that I have my, uh, for my PhD students, a call class, that is on um, Wednesday. Uh, it would be like, well, actually, it's a, I could move it around. I mean, I'm just wondering if there's... Uh, like if there's a bit of flexibility with regard we, to the day and the hour. We have Talon, Talon teaching and learning in isolation. And you'd be uh -huh. more yeah, than welcome okay. to, uh, All right. to uh, propose a time. 
we've got to. Okay, I'll I'll do that. I'll do that. I'm sure my um, students would love that. Okay. You, do, you, oh. do you know the? Do you know how to do it? Um, I yes. Tiny the calendar. Url, tinyurl.com slash talent twenty. Yeah, you know, actually, like most of these things are, um, for some reason, um, like filtered for Iranians. I mean, like, uh, like oh. I'm not allowed to use. Yeah, I mean, even this Zoom. I mean, the, it's Google Docs. Or you, uh, well, you, actually, you need to have the full. You need you'd to be surprised. You'd be surprised to know how many things uh, Google has um, banned for Iranians. So, ah. actually, I'm using Zoom through a VPN because they don't allow Iranians to use that either. I mean, this okay. is banned by. I okay. Well, on that side. get in touch but with I'll, me. I'll manage. Yeah, I'll yeah, do that. Uh, okay. Contact me. Vous allez maintenant vous allez vous allez enseigner le français un cours de français. Ah oui, c'est ça. Je peux parler un peu. Oui. Je peux parler un peu. Pas très bien, mais. Non, mais non, c'est le cours de français, oui. Oh my God, I'm, I shouldn't have mentioned the French oh, class. Et puis nous pouvons euh, le jour. Ça y est, n'importe. La jungle. <rire> je dois euh, pratiquer un peu. Et ok, ça, ouais. ok. Ça, un peu. Nous, nous la, pour, la prochaine Quand fois. Tour, nous pouvons pratiquer ici. Merci beaucoup à tous et à tous. Ok, à la prochaine. Bye. À la prochaine. À la prochaine. Thank okay. you, everybody. It was nice talking to you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye. bye. Okay, great. <laughs> I didn't mean to embarrass her. I thought she spoke French. Who? She oh, I, I, she said yeah, it was French. She really, huh? She said it yeah. was French, of course, right? Yeah, I thought she, I. Maybe but, she's learning French. Well, maybe her French is like my German. I'm I'm technically certified as a German teacher, but uh, you do <laughs> not want to be learning German from me. <laughs> you know what? Well, Mm -hmm. But in a lot of cases over the years, I've, I've met people who said they were English teachers and I'm struggling so much to understand anything they say. Yeah. And I'm just, my mouth is got what? <laughs> now you know where all those alternate Englishes come from. Yeah. 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 Well, now that I have a hearing problem, you know, because I wear hearing aids oh. and everything's always coming through my device, ah. I, I find that accent, different accents in English do, are a speed bump for me. Mm. I have to get used to that particular person and the way they speak. And I really use lips. And now when everyone's wearing a mask, I'm lost mm. because I can't use the lips and I'm uh. interacting with strangers. So uh. if, I, if I'm talking to someone and I don't know them and they're wearing a mask, you know, I can't interact with them. Uh, another like if I'm in a doctor's office and the nurse says, you know, I'm going to take your blood pressure. I'm like, you're going to do what? And then, but then I sort of figure out some context. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess so. They strap it on but you. Yeah. Anyway, has any have you gone to have you gone out at all? Um, Me? You go? Yeah. Do you guys go out? Do you well, you not have a we, problem with? We have been able to go out the whole time. Really, I. I'm just scared. That's all. It's scary here. To well, go that's, out. you've got a very different situation where oh, you, I'm so uh, I'm so scared. I'm in New York. It's scary. Mm. Well, I I went out today. Uh, we needed fruit, and we can get it delivered, but we can't get it delivered before Wednesday, and we're running out of fruit. And we like to have fruit, so yes. I went out looking for fruit. So I went. Oh, it's a. I, we don't have a car, so. Uh, I went, um, it's about two kilometers to the nearest supermarket. And when I got there, it started to rain when I got there. And uh, there was a line of people waiting to get into the supermarket. And I knew about this line of people, uh, but they were all bunched together. You know, I didn't want to get in that line. I, I, the line looked like it was going fairly smoothly, yeah. but long they line. Too so close. They were too close, right? They were too close. I was not interested. So I put on my poncho. I carry a poncho in my pack. I put on my poncho and I went out. It wasn't raining that hard. And I went down to the next supermarket down. And that one is kind of in a exclusive little uh, uh, kind of a mall that's attached to a condominium and a little bit pricier, but there was nobody there. So, uh, 
and I didn't encounter it because I, I'm coming from way outside of town back more into uh, it's called Taj, Tanjung Bunga where I live Tanjung Tongkong is where I went and if you go further much further well I don't know if you, how well you know Penang Mike, Michael might but you get to Gurney you go five kilometers from where I live and then if you go another five kilometers you get to Georgetown which is where the population density is and um, so in my neck of the woods, I never see any police control. They might be patrolling for cars. They might be, uh, especially when they had the, the lockdown, they were kind of stopping cars. And I carry a passport and I carry a, a bill that says where I live because I'm allowed to go 10 kilometers from where I, uh, I am. But normally, I wouldn't say we're very scared because Malaysia is, has got a good handle on this. Yeah. Uh, because it, it's a... Well, Malaysia includes Kuala Lumpur, and Kuala Lumpur has a bit of a problem. So uh, there, there are hot spots there, but, or locuses. Okay, so, but in Penang, it's actually, yeah. they haven't had any new cases except incoming, you know, people coming from uh, abroad or outside. I so see. I think Malaysia just extended the lockdown into June now. And which is fine with me. It keeps people out of Penang because part of the lockdown is they can't go between states. And, oh. but I think they're going to, they're letting us out in a couple of days for light exercise. We can't go into the mountains because they can't monitor uh, aggregates of people there. Because a lot right. of times they've got some really nice mountain trails and you can go up. It's a good slog. It's a good exercise. You get up these trails. Families go up there and they sit at these uh outdoor lovely places in the mountainside set up by the community but they don't want anybody there they can't monitor them monitor them unless they use drones yeah. but right. anyway so they're they're still locking us out of our uh, our national forests uh but um mm. there is there is a nearby where i live there's a hill you can walk up and, yeah you can get a good walk anyway oh yeah, yeah. Well, well we walk the towers in our apartment complex is three towers they're each about 25 stories so yeah, 25, but we live on the 20. purely but then it's purely just, just the exercise day. it's not it's not it's as better than nothing <laughs> if, you're, if you're trying to keep fit for hill walking it's just the right, right thing. yeah 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 to keep keep fit right west yeah. australian premier today said that moving state restrictions so within the state western australia and south australia are starting to go back to something like normal but mm -hmm. both states are saying no one comes in and no one goes out for a long time if and you're in south have, australia yeah we have almost no cases in both states that's great where, where are you people where people coming where? in from outside and he said that was the, it'll be one of the last things to remove will be the state border restrictions because yeah, you we think about a third of the state in. carve it out from the west coast down to not quite to melbourne yeah and that's so, south Australia. And then you don't want people coming in because that's going to wreck everything yeah for sure so but where I, sorry australia where in australia are you exactly i'm in south australia which is the big chunk at the bottom in the middle <laughs> is that VC or NSW? Victoria. No, no, no. South Wales is over on the far side. New South Wales are the very heavily populated areas. So go left towards the middle of the country and you should SA? see that. Is yeah, Melbourne in South Australia or New South Wales? South Australia. Okay. Oh, it's called South Australia. Mm -hmm. That's the name of it. Oh, the name is okay. nice. And the city where I live is Adelaide. Mm-hmm. What I'm sorry, what's wait, what's Adelaide? He lives in Adelaide. Adelaide. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, the reason I'm I'm asking is that I'm uh there's a fellow from uh Deacon College. I don't know if you've ever heard of that college. Deacon. Um, Deacon, D E A K I N you have heard of it? Yeah. Okay. Because uh, he's from Deakin College, and he's he's not in our field at all. He's in business, but he's very interested in uh, flipped learning, and he's doing his doctoral dissertation on flipped learning. And he was going to do it in Australia, but then with the colleges closing, he he lost his site. He needed 
to do online. So he decided to do online flip learning instead. And then he went on the internet looking who works, who does online flip learning and he couldn't find anybody. And he found me. <laughs> <laughs> All so roads lead to lane. <laughs> You do online flip learning. I said, yep. Yeah. <laughs> he says, I might want to talk to you. I'm doing my dissertation. So long story short, we've already asked. I asked my dean, and he's asking if he can do it and on his end. And I asked at LIU, and it looks like he's going to do his doctoral dissertation on my SOFLA model of online flip learning. And he's in Australia. So he's 14 hours different from me, and we have a hard time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, your morning so, is evening. 14 yeah. hours. There's very little different. working, like if you think of the nine to five day, there's very little hours that intersect with your, usually it's, you can't find a time where it's working hours for both parties. Well, late well, afternoon, what, maybe. What time is it for you now? It's what about it? 10 p.m. here. 10 so that, yeah, here an hour. And, and he's on a half hour system. So that means, well, actually, I know Western Australia is my time zone. And right now it's 8.30 in my time zone. So yeah, you're one hour. Yeah, it's west that. in Australia. Because yeah. well, well, Australia is far as it's east yeah. west. So it goes through several time zones, just like this. Thing. Yeah, and surprisingly, uh, well, we're over in one edge, like a lot of Thailand is an hour before us and just north of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, so we're kind of in the Chinese uh, time zone and it happens to in include Western Australia. I see. Yeah. Makes it convenient. But, I just want to talk, say what happened to me at the supermarket yesterday it was the, very oh. much the same as you, Vance, except I decided to stay in the line just to see what happened. And mm -hmm. people were keeping their distance, so I didn't feel like... This is a line oh. to get into the supermarket, yeah? But that's yeah, okay if it's a the line perfect. where they keep distance. I that's wouldn't okay. mind that. Yeah. So they had, and it was clearly, it was monitored and marked out, this is where you stand. And there you it, go. It was a long line, but it didn't, it, maybe five minutes before I was go. in the supermarket. And I did my, my shopping and I left and I realized I don't think it took any longer than it ever does. Just I spent five minutes outside, uh -huh. and once I was inside the supermarket, it was quicker and easier than it normally is because it's uh -huh. not crowded because they're patrolling how many people are allowed in each mm -hmm. aisle. And I came out thinking they should do this all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was a much the new normal experience. Uh, it's like one of the speakers. I forget where now. I've gone to so many different sessions, but somebody said. Um, It'll, it won't be the, just the new normal. It'll be a new and better normal yeah. in a way. There are well, certain things that might be better after we've learned some things. Well, normal I, I is the problem. Today, my son-in-law has been working from home, of course, like so many people. Yeah. He has 40, there are 42 people in his company and they're all working from home now. Admittedly, there's a, it's an IT company, so they're all quite capable of working from home. But he said, they've all come to the realization they don't need that office space that they have been regularly going to for several years. Yes. And they're already talking about they're going to get rid of a lot of their office space. Right? Yep. So that's, that's factor that's, one. Yeah. And he said, so what happens now to all of those people? So our company would have 42 people going to work in the CBD in the downtown area and maybe now only five six maybe ten of them will go there the rest will stay home now all of those 42 people generally go to the local coffee shop or the snack bars cafes for lunch and coffee and morning tea he said that all now happens locally in small towns or in regional suburbs not in the middle of the city so you're going to get all these cafes springing up locally Oh. to service the needs of people who now work at home. And he said, right. isn't that a brilliant development? And I said, yes, it is. And I was, what did I, I was listening to something today that said that cities, you know, some people think that that's terrible. And if you're short term, you're thinking, well, the city is going to just disappear. Well, if you look at it from a historical perspective, because I think the person 
who was talking was a historian. This has happened in cities all the time. You know, cities are prone to earthquakes, they're prone to floods, fires, you know, they get wiped out every now and then. People come back to them and they start them in a completely different way. So, different way. And, and that could well, mean that. Character. Different yeah, character. right now, cities are very high priced, but it could be that they become kind of hippie areas or, you know, people go to them for different reasons. So, the character will change, but they'll, yeah. they'll still be there. Hi, Nina. Hi, Hi Nina. Nina. Sorry, I'm late. I overslept. Oh, good. Surprise, you. surprise. I, under, I underslept. <laughs> I woke up too early. Uh, well, I woke up around six. I don't know why I woke up so early, but I did. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, well, Lane, you've, you, you've been really just going crazy on this SOFLA, the flipped learning approach. The What was the F SO stand for? It's synchronized, synchronous, I'm synchronous. Sorry. synchronous, synchronous online. Online flipped learning, learning approach. I'm going to get yeah. that eventually. So far. Yeah. yeah, synchronous online flipped learning approach. And I was talking to Heike today, and, or was it yesterday? I don't know. No, it's today. Or maybe it was yesterday because you gave it on the day before. We just finished the virtual uh, roundtable conference, Heike's virtual roundtable conference. Really yeah, a nice, a really neat conference this time around. But, uh, Lane went on about four o'clock my time in the morning, so I missed it. But I'm and and uh, Heike has caught up with the recordings. I put right right before yours. So I, the last time I looked, I didn't see your recording. But she was telling me that your your uh, presentation, your workshops, really came off really well. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the recording. Well, yeah. I, what's interesting is that it was the opposite of what I did when I came. I, to webheads, the co mm -hmm. learning together, because it wasn't a presentation at all, at all, at all. Mm -hmm. It was what she wanted me to do was she wanted me to teach the way I teach. Yes. And the, everyone who came would be uh -huh. yeah. in my class. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to teach them grammar. I'm not going to teach them English or, you know, so I, what I did was I, the content of it became uh, flipped learning. I was teaching them about uh -huh. flipped learning, but I was using the SOFLA steps. So each step we went through, I said, now we're going to do step two. And we did step two. And I said, this is step three. And then we did it, but we just did it. So uh -huh. it didn't, it, so they didn't modeled, have the theoretical piece. You, the rationale, modeled it. you didn't just talk about it. They had the, the experience of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay. um, it was okay, but there were only 10 people there. It was very small, but that's okay because then you, you really could do it like a, like almost like a fishbowl technique. Like this was the group that was doing it. And then anyone who watches the recording, you'll watch them doing it. So what sense? are the steps? What's step one? What's step two? What's step three? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I have to go oh, and you listen know what to it. Eh? said to me, I should, or we're recording this, but I'll say, but, um, but she said, first of all, I, I shouldn't call it self look because no one knows what that is. But, but that's the whole point, isn't it? That, that when you have an acronym, that you want people to begin to think of the acronym. Mm -hmm. And what like, is don't that you acronym? Know acronym? Like TESOL. Mm -hmm. We, if people don't know TESOL, learn it and then you'll know. And then we just say TESOL, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't have a problem with that. And it's a very, it stands for the key elements. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Synchronous so online I'm not sure. approach. I'm not a help. marketing person, but anyway. And she said, it's too complicated. She wants me to simplify it. She said, kiss, no, you, make it, it kiss. It's your brand now. The kiss symbol. No, so she no, said, no. there's too many steps. It's too complicated. But that's how I teach. If you, you got us on so and The whole thing falls apart. I, I like software. So rhymes with not bully you, <laughs> and you can pronounce it. It's softler, sofa or softler. Does sofla. it work in every language? <laughs> yeah, sofla. Is that he, how do you pronounce it? Sofla. 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 I don't know. Sofla. Yeah. Sofla. Yeah. Sofla. <laughs> I like it, <clears throat> and you can play on words, and it's the softler, softler ah. approach. I heard someone did a did a, a work, something on cooking last night. It was a, one, maybe one of the last I listened to, and she said uh, she was uh, did a res, uh, recipe it on Brazilian, Brazilian cooking on tabule. Somebody how to make 
how to make tabbouleh. Are you uh, familiar with tabbouleh? Yeah, yeah, the parsley and gold or something like that. Uh, it's Lebanese. It's a Lebanese, a, a standard yeah, Lebanese. Uh, all Arabs know tabule. And she said, she talked about making tabule. Uh, sorry, tabule. Tabule. And, okay, anyway, wherever she's like buying her tabule. <laughs> Anyhow, so pronunciation is kind of somewhat critical, but then she put it on a slide and we all, we all knew what it was. <laughs> Years ago, I mean, we'd all have little anecdotes like this. A teacher, a student came up to me after a class and said, Michael, I hear all the time people saying, see you later. What is this see you later? Oh, yeah, said, right. See you later. See you later. See you later. Yeah. Was, see you later. Uh -huh. See you later. Australians do go, see you later. Right? And yeah. especially with the RD <laughs> rather than late, it's later. See you later. And he identified right. it. What is and, this? In America, that? maybe it's for here to go. Is what? Yeah, yeah. For here to go. Okay. You know, You're good McDonald's, to go? Is, it, is your burger for here to go? Oh, for here to go, yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have it here or take it with you? Exactly. Yeah. Here to go, yeah. <laughs> so those are the steps. Nina asked the steps. Oh, thank you, Lane. I, I used to put it in a linear way, but now I'm starting to think it's a cycle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything's always a cycle. But, mm -hmm. but I put the pre-work as green because that's the missing link. If they don't do that, then the cycle breaks. Mm. Ah. Did your, did your uh, participants, had your 10 participants done that last night? Um, had, had they done the pre-work? The pre-work, yeah. Yeah, most of them had. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. yeah. What was the pre-work? In fact, a lot of people did the pre-work and then didn't come to the workshop. Ah, well, her, her <laughs> pre-work. They thought they knew everything. She has them read something. She has them watch a video about uh, what they're going to hear. Uh, they have a choice of readings. It's two things. You can read this or you can read that. And uh, the last thing is you take a small survey. So well, what, it's not always like that. I mean, if sometimes I wasn't it's a, signed up it's a for video the lesson. Round table. Will I be able to find? Yeah. The link to that. Well, you I tell you, I you can go to learningtogether.net, and I've blogged it, uh, and all the right. information is there. So that it all points back to uh, to uh, other things. And so, uh, I did a presentation on Talon. And I made a slideshow, which is like it shows. Was I in it? Were you in the on Talon? No, I don't. It was actually I was there. I the building. He, hmm? he didn't show us. He he just talked. Oh. What he did was he talked about how the history. I'm telling you, it was your presentation, but he went through the history of how, how it how it became Talon, how it yeah, yeah. how it emerged, and mm. then what it looks like now and how it functions. So yes, it's more like a like a pro how the process took place and how it's continuing to take place. And then an invitation for people to participate. Yeah, okay. I'm kind of surprised. And here they all aren't. <laughs> well, are, is the round table still going on? No, it no. was yesterday two, and, to, and the day before. But two it's days. all, it was recorded and the recordings yeah. are starting to appear online. And as many recordings as I could find online, I put it learningtogether.net. So, uh, it's she's only got most, she hasn't quite got uh, lanes or at least when I looked before I came here. I, oh, I, I can see. send you. I have all my I have the recording and everything. I can send it to you. I just sent it to the participants, but I can send it to you. If you put if you give me links that you share with your participants, I'll put them in the Learning Together .net, uh, page. Okay. Whether or not, or you could also if you got right, you you could also put it up at your. Um, at your virtual roundtable, uh, you know your 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 place, you know where you you could put the links there because people will be going back there. So you could do both actually. Well, what's the best thing to do? To send it if I want oh. to send it, I send it to you. Just send it yeah. to you. Send me an email oh. and it, and just tell me what links you want me to include, and I'll put them there. And then you should also go right. to the the Google Doc where you entered okay. your details and you could also augment them there as well. Okay. Whoever goes back there, we'll see it. Okay. 
I'm wearing my Webhead shirt. Wow, cool. <laughs> oh, you are. <laughs> remember that? You remember the Webhead shirt? Yeah. I and remember. Then we decided that the logo was too small. Yeah, somebody was really surprised when they got that they expected it to be. I a was big too. Logo. I was. It was this tiny little thing, yeah. and then you can't even wear a sweater over it because it covers the logo. I, oh, I have to go. Well. I'm wearing it. Coach, <laughs> yeah. hmm. with the shirts oh, that I do ordered. A rerun. Who actually got those printed? I think it was me. Mm -hmm. I think so too. <laughs> Is that your idea? There, there was there was I, this um, business. I can't remember the name of it anymore. Um, but you could send them the graphic, but obviously <laughs> didn't work the way I intended. It must be okay. something you can do online these days pretty easily. But I would guess. Well, we could put a talon. We could make a talon one. You well, we don't have a logo. We just have the letters. We oh no, there's a logo. a logo. You go to oh, uh, nice. yeah. You go What's to tiny tinyurl.com. <laughs> Slash Alan. Reasonably thrilled. You can also saw, see it at bitly.com. Tiny URL. Yeah. And at, on that page. So there's, there's a really good logo. The, Excellent logo. How did you come up with the logo? My cat thought it up. <laughs> Is so your cat fun. in Malaysia, Vance? No, he's in Doha now. So, uh, but he's, he's doing quite well there. He's so cute. Aww. Yeah, he's a lovely cat. Anyway, he's a graphic designer. Did you know that? I, apparently. You do now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, oh, is that where the, is that the picture of the cat on the, with the keyboard? Yeah. That's the logo? Well, oh, except. I, I've I, seen that picture. I put in the the screen he's looking at is slightly different from the one he was looking at before. Oh, oh, <laughs> I didn't know that was okay. Yeah. So anyway. All right. Okay. Just you know, drawing from my old repositories, photo repositories, to find uh, things to put there. That one le leapt out at me. I think actually Bobby oh, suggested that. She suggested I get something with the cat. <laughs> So Lane, do you watch the News Hour on PBS? I do. You do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You may have noticed that you know all of the the anchors and reporters are reporting from their homes. Yes, that's right. And there are two of them, William Brangham, and I can't remember who the other one is right now that have cats that are often. In the background. Oh, okay. Think of you. Who's the and guy who computers. does witness? Uh, does it. it witness? No. Canvas? Witness. It's uh, on Al Jazeera. Is it? Al is I don't. Anyway. Oh, I don't know. Uh, I uh, I can't even remember what I'm talking about. I think it's witness, but he's quite a good reporter. But I, you can see from his home, he has a guitar or puts a guitar in the background. So, uh, I should put a guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the reporters, you get to see their books. So I, I like, I'm trying to read what the, You're trying to read the, book the titles are. Uh, uh, like yeah. I can see you arrange those. the book so that you see the right ones. Yes. And, but, and nice art. It's just really interesting to, to see them in their... You don't think they stage it? Well, well, I'm sure they stage it to a certain amount, which brings me to Michael. Because uh, Michael always puts himself in front of the sea. And I'm always wondering, Michael, why do you do that? Is your house a mess? <laughs> every, every now and then he ducks his head in the ocean. Have you notice that? No, it's, it's um, where I'm sitting, um, it's very indistinct. So I'll just go to normal. This is what normal is. Mm -hmm. It's a map on the wall. So there's a map on the wall, there's a poster on the other wall, it's half dark, half light. It's very... Um, turn, turn the computer and let's see if we can find you a better angle. Well, the computer's hooked up to about 15 things, Vance, uh, which is why I don't... You'd have to rotate the room in that case. It's it, connected it, to three it, monitors and two hard drives. Uh, and okay. Oh, so it's so so like that's a why, base of operations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
I just don't think that's a very attractive background. Hmm. So you so, choose this. Well, it's, it's too, this is a comfortable background, but it's not. Yeah, yours is good. <laughs> in an and easy you, chair. <laughs> So in my background, you can see my grandmother's china closet. Oh, yeah. 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 And uh, Christmas decorations on the wall. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the, um, the Christmas stocking that my neighbor made for Vicky when she was little. Oh, OK. Hmm. We had a cabinet back with like that in room. my parents' house. And as they got older, we kept noticing, my sister was particularly mindful of this because she had her eye on all of this stuff that she was going to take when mum and dad mm -hmm. passed on. And all this stuff kept disappearing. And it turns out there are predators that knock on the doors of old people and convince them to sell all this stuff for, you know, nothing because they're not going to need it very much longer and it's not worth anything and you're going to be dead soon. So all of this stuff was disappearing. And then we realized we had to, had to take the rest of it and protect it because dad was giving it away for, you know, dollars. Oh. For these bastards that turn up at old people's houses oh. and flip on their stuff. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So they actually got they some of the stuff. Do. Sorry, Nina. They actually did take some of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was all you know, sold for ridiculous amounts, but yes, a lot of stuff disappeared. Before you could do anything about it. Hmm. Well, my, my situation is, is different. My, my daughter, um, you know, she's on the autism spectrum and, and she's also got anxiety disorder. So what she's anxious about these days is if my husband and I die and she has to go live in an apartment, what's she going to do with all this stuff? How is she going to get rid of it? All of your <laughs> stuff. Oh. Yeah. The furniture and the books. I mean, she's really obsessing about all my books downstairs. <laughs> well, so I said, well, I'll have to figure something out. But of course I haven't. Don't you have... Said, You'll hire somebody and they'll have a sale. And it'll all go. We, we call them garage sales here. Yeah, well, we you have to sign yeah, out. You can do that. You, we can but, call, call them garage sales or yard sales. That's a little yeah. bit more common here. And they or, do incredibly well. Um, but she's, her, she, she, she probably wouldn't herself be able to do that, organize no. it. So she'd have to find somebody to do the organizational yeah. piece. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And even within <laughs> families, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not I'm, particularly good at the that. The thing stuff, that I'm worried about is where she's going to live and who's going to help her. Her house, that's, her house is not. That's the piece. She wants to stay here. Uh -huh. But really, I mean, it, it's paid off. So that seems like an option. But mm -hmm. she would need some help. And people that help people like her do not also do housework, so that's two people. And then those people that do housework don't also do house maintenance and yard work, so that's like mm -hmm. three or four people. We can't afford that. Mm. She's gonna do it. I, you know, she's not gonna go cut the grass and paint the house. Yeah, <laughs> you're better off getting the capital, stuff. get the capital out of the house, and that will get her started on on some other living space. Yeah, it makes I mean, more I, sense for her. This is. I wouldn't care about dying of this virus if I had all my ducks in a row for her, but I don't, and I can't think what to do. You have people oh, you mean she's specifically saying, worried about if you get the virus? Freedom. Sorry. Well, it's more... Sorry. It's just Sorry, verbalized Mark. anxiety. Uh, that these people in America what's going to happen when we're not here? They're willing to die for freedom. Oh, oh for, for the stock market. Yeah, not for freedom. Yeah, oh, yeah. Want, Some of them want die. to die from the COVID virus for the sake of their freedom, you know? Well, yeah, did you, you hear the guy who said there are more important things than living? That's the lieutenant, yeah, governor, lieutenant governor of Texas. Texas. Yeah, that's one reason I'm not in Texas right now. Yeah, <laughs> I, think, I think one thing that's happening here, because a lot of 
my, I have this other hat I wear with this culturally responsive instruction stuff I do. And, and I've studied a lot about these different, the difference between individualism and collectivism. And I think that in general, um, our, our country has, is so far towards the individualist end that we cannot function collectively. We don't know how to do that. We interpret collective, uh, collective uh, con uh, functioning as oppression and, and being told what to do and where no one's gonna tell me what to do. And rather than a sense of community and collectivism in the positive way, it doesn't have a positive feel to it in this country. I think that's our problem. Yeah, why don't we take their guns the down to the airport reserve. and try to go through security? Because you know, I mean, they have the right to do that, don't they? They're still on home country, you know. I mean, it, obviously, there are lines you have to draw, and usually it's your face, right? So, um, anyhow, but I, I understand the governor of Michigan is was trying to create a law, draft a law that would prevent people from coming into the state house with weapons and then of course the nra is now what a concept. Um, huh what a concept no weapons yeah. in the state house i i don't know do you in your state houses can you can people walk in with guns no in maryland we don't have an open carry law oh, no, that's, that's, that's a, the problem in michigan it's, state, it's a state carry. by state open it's called open carry mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's, so it's not really an american thing it's a state thing this is some, I, I never see a gun Mm -hmm. other than television, mm. except I suppose on a policeman. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. Oh, I, when I lived in Wisconsin, everyone had a gun. I was, our house, we, there were very few of us, oh, no guns in your house? No, and why would I have a gun? Everybody else had a gun. That, but they were mostly hunting guns, you know, in fairness. Mm -hmm. But um, but the, but guns was no big deal to have a gun in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Just say it's yeah, I grew up in state. Texas, lots of guns around. Yes. I never had one. But... I was talking to a guy from Singapore a few years ago who was working in the US for a while. I don't know what state it was, but apparently every now and then there are random checks. So whoever these government oh. people are, they come in and check that uh, you've got a license for your gun. And he just thought it was a bit hilarious that they were turning up on a workplace to check people's guns. He said, turns out of the 25 people in that office, my, me and one other person didn't have a gun. The other 23 did. But they didn't <laughs> wow. have a gun in the office. They certainly had one in the car. <laughs> uh, this is in Singapore? No, this was a, oh, guy, a guy from Singapore in United who States. working in America and couldn't believe it. He didn't know yeah. that all his workmates had guns. Yeah, 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 yeah. The, the people car. he was with. Yeah, right. Wow. Oh, well. I never assume guns, but I, I rarely leave Maryland these days. Mm. That documentary by Michael Moore many years ago, I mean, mm. he did this random checks and he, every, just about everybody he asked, he obviously, you know, framed it so he made his documentary, but I think every single person he asked in America had a gun. Speaking of Michael Moore. Yeah. So have you seen Michael Moore's new production where he's no. the producer? not the director. The planet thing? Yes. Did you see it? I started watching it, yeah. Apparently, I hope, I hope, but apparently it's a crock of... Doesn't surprise me. It, I mean, I watched that movie and it basically accuses all the big environmental organizations of colluding with the enemy. Mm. Um, oh. I was so depressed after mm. that. It was like Maybe he went off the deep end, huh? Why? Why am I alive? Like, why do I bother? Why do I do anything? Um, and then somebody sent me. I, I posted that on Facebook. I said, I don't. You know, this movie is really very depressing. And a friend of mine sent me a link to one article debunking it. Anyway, it just, um, it, it made me very mistrustful of Michael Moore. Mm. Just, I, his earlier movies, I had no reason mm -hmm. to doubt. I mean, he's kind of over the top sometimes, but 
Yeah. And this, this, his association with this movie makes me kind of, makes me doubt everything that came before. Like, why did he mm. do this? Mm. Well, I think he, he probably got very, very frustrated because he was looking to have, uh, you know, Bernie emerge triumphant. And when that didn't happen, I think, I think this people book, didn't know where to go with their feelings. And maybe that's where he went with his. I, I'm sorry. I don't know. Apparently, I'm, I'm I mean, a, the guy I'm that a great directed, psychologist. No, <laughs> I think his name is Jeff Gibbs. And his claims were very outdated. Like he would say something about solar energy can only like you have all of these solar panels and they can only power like three houses and you can never go to total total renewable energy. And they were saying that although the movie just came out, like those things were true 20 years ago, mm -hmm. but they're not true anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, if, if you're curious, if you go back on my Facebook page, you'll find a link to the movie and in the comments is a link to the article that, and then I read another article that was, that was cited in that one um, mm. that reassured me that the environmental organizations are not for the most part, part of the enemy, mm. which was a depressing thing. You know, like I I've, I've know, been like giving my money to them. Why? <laughs> Sorry, Michael. I thought he was dangerous years back. Even the stuff that I mean, the, the gun one, I guess, was the the one that made him kind of falling for Columbine. Yeah, and I just thought what he does is he takes a, a story, yeah, in, in a location, and from there he extrapolates as if it's happening across an entire country and makes the leaps to these outrageous conclusions based on real world facts and things that did happen, but the conclusions he draws from the things that he examines, which are very selective and very biased, are just, if it was an academic paper, it'd be shot down in flames. Right, well, that's true. <laughs> and that's how it makes movies. What about Sigler? You know, one, you, one thing that does concern me, it's, this is a, tan, a it's tangentially related, which is when you said if it was an academic paper. Um, one of the things I've noticed now is I'm less motivated to do a serious academic paper simply because it's going to take too long to get it out. And the, what people are doing now is they're getting their stuff out immediately by just putting it in places where uh, I, I, you know, like not just blogs, but, but there are journals and pl places that will get it out very quickly without a lot of lengthy peer review, sending it out back and forth. What does everybody think about that? Are we losing academia as we know it or knew it because we don't have time to wait two years before an article comes out, you know, or the, a book? On the internet section of Tesla EJ is like that. I know where we're submitting, you know that. Ilka and I are submitting. Ah, is Ilka, Ilka with you. Okay, cool. I'm her co-author. Ilka, co -author. Got... Ilka ah, I'm excellent. everywhere. <laughs> okay. Hey. That Ilka and I, we're, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing that together, yeah. All right, sure. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, uh, I'll be glad to hear that. You know, I do, all of a sudden, I got a lot of, some articles piled on me, so I don't know. Well, well I, you I, you put your announcement out there in a very I've done in a that place several a lot of times. Saw. That's a, the fourth one. I never got any response before. Anyway, but <laughs> anyway, no worries. That's the idea. We're trying to get, but I mean, those articles will come out. But I and also it when yeah. I have had more than one, sometimes there's been something wrong with one of them that, I, you know, I'd take the one that was ready and. Uh, put that in the next issue, and then there's always one three months later and three. Oh, months. you just do one at one for each issue. I could do more, but to tell you frankly, life is too short. You know, it's yeah, okay, right, right, uh, right. It's a lot of work to do those. Yeah, but I could, yeah. I could conceivably do more. Uh, but anyway, uh, we'll see what comes on my plate. And then if yeah. I did two, and then I wouldn't have one for the next one, and I'd be struggling. Right. No, that's true. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I'm also doing one for T-Cell Connections. 
Mm. It would fit with what's going on everywhere else in society and every other walk of life that provides information to the populace. It's watered down, it's quick, it's headline oriented. So if the same things happen to academia, it would kind of follow, it would make sense, but I don't know the answer to that. That's a bit of a worry. Well, Tesla well, Lee is a refereed journal. So most of you submitted an article to Tesla Lee J, they'll send it out for review. Uh, Ones that come to me, I review them. I'm I'm the I'm the referee. Okay, but uh, I don't send it to anybody else. But I'm a fairly decent editor, I think. So you know, and uh, everything I, I've been doing this since 2002. So you can go back and you can look at all the there. Everything's online, except for the ones I've written. Perhaps they're mostly pretty well considered. Uh, <laughs> pretty good. Nina's yawning. Bobby's got dinner ready. Oh, it's well, nine o'clock. I'm yawning because I, I never really woke up. <laughs> <laughs> but my day is starting. Well, Mike it's always nice good. to see you guys. He's at 10.30 now. Yeah. For me, it's... 10.30. It's time for bed. Oh, 11.30, sorry. No, 10.30. Yes, 10.30. Really. Uh, it's 10.30 in Adelaide. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not too late. So, Adelaide. And then, Adelaide. And then, and Suzanne wants to meet uh, 7.30, maybe next time. But anyway, well, that doesn't mean you have to be there, but and if I were there with Suzanne. Suzanne Marandi wants yeah. to, she's mm -hmm. teaching now. She was here earlier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it, this, this time frame conflicts with her teaching responsibilities. Yes. And she, she really wants to be connected to the group, yeah. so. Yeah. Well, if you get much earlier, <laughs> you're not gonna see me. <laughs> well. But we'll be here. You no, know, there's no way to win. This is an we'll international stay, we'll stay group. There's time. no way to. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if there's a way to alternate. Like first you do. Well, there. there then, are pe then people get mixed up. Which time is it this week? Yes. Which well, you have to figure that out somehow. It's like well, learning your acronym. People can handle it. Yeah, well, we're, um, we're, this is the Webheads group, and traditionally it was always, we sort of started at a different time. We came back noon. To, to yeah. noon, Sunday, that's when we always did it. But it's the only one of the things that goes on every week. I mean, that's what Talon is about. It's, it's while we're in, while we have this right. time and we're meeting online, you can, I mean, like, you know, the people who are coming up tomorrow, there's this lady named Karen Schwartz. She's, uh, right. she's doing, she's been teaching, I think it's higher level students, but she teaches them English through getting them to code natural language processing. So basically, right. I, I suppose you can sort of assimilate grammar rules if you have to code them. Uh, and in my view, um, when you're teaching coding, as Steve said 20, 30 years ago, uh, the, sometimes the language learning is something that's ancillary to what's being taught, which is so true, of, I think, things that we do. So if people get stuck on technology, well, I mean, you've got to talk about technology and students will do that. But anyway, that's, that's tomorrow's. And the, uh, Nick Peachy is coming. And Nick Peachy is uh, offered to talk to us on the 15th. And is then he going to some... make the same? I heard him yesterday. Is he going to give that same talk or? No. Uh, oh, okay. Well, you know, we've talked about that. And also Graham Stanley is coming too. And Graham says, and when I say, well, you know, you could do this or that. And he said, I've done that four times already just in the last month. <laughs> Okay, well, look, you know, we like to talk to people. So just, you know, I think Nick's entitled his, uh, so now you're teaching online, uh, what's next sort of thing. So, you know, we, we get him. Okay. We don't really. More of a conversation. People. Yeah, I get a, More conversation of a conversation with these people. And that's, that's the thing. You could, you can play, you can replay their recordings all you want, you know. And, sure. And then Graham, too. I, I Oh, you know what I, I told Graham? Uh, why don't you give a flipped presentation? And he said, ooh, he put it, like, oh, 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 ooh, I like that. He, he said he would apply your uh, uh, synchronous online flipped learning approach. Okay, oh, so, great. yeah, so he's, he's a, cool. being influenced. We're all learning together, right? So he, yep. has, he hasn't set a date for it. And there's well, something you can else, apply Maggie, it to anything, so. Maggie Sokolik is doing a presentation and California, they're, they're having a conference you have to pay for, a virtual conference. Now, it doesn't make any sense to me if you're getting people to pay for a conference. Well, I mean, that was back in the 70s, or, or I, don't, I can't remember when I started getting yeah. But I mean, the, the problem was you had to put a credit card down in conferences. That's why we started WebEd's and Action Online Convergence, which I'm sure Michael remembers. 
and, uh, and Nina too, probably. You remember, were you involved in those? Yeah, okay. So WebEd's in action online conversions, believe it or not, was the and first. two of them or maybe three? There were three of them, 2005, seven, and nine. That was the first conference that I'm aware of on that scale, on a global scale, that was free. So I didn't do five because I wasn't, I mean, I didn't mm -hmm. even know what a webhead was in 2005. Yeah, but you, and you were one all, all along. But anyway. No, I wasn't. <laughs> I, was, I was definitely like not a webhead. You're it a, wasn't until I took becoming a webhead that <laughs> I knew what a blog was, what a wiki was. I mean, well, things I did before. I mean, in mental, mentally, you were a webhead. No, <laughs> the only things I did were email and Word. I don't think I even knew how to do a PowerPoint. I was completely non techy Mike, Michael and I used to do conferences with webheads, writing for webheads. We used to get them into this Hawaii conference. Hawaii had a conference all the time. And one time I had to get TCC. them. TCC. Yeah, teaching in community colleges. Yeah, TCC. Yeah. And wow. they did it in Hawaii, and they, it was an online conference, but you had to pay $25 to get in. I, said, I told them, I want to bring my students, you know. Oh, yeah. they said, oh, okay. Well, we'll let them in for free. Okay, fine. Okay. So that worked out, but that was the thing. We, we, had, we were bringing these WebEd students into conferences. And, but anyway, but that's... that's um, Oh, except for uh, Michael, uh, 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 John Hibbs's global education, the, the global, lear uh, glo global Learn Day. Global Learn, learn day. day. Yeah, Michael flew to Abu Dhabi to, we did one of those on stage in an auditorium where I worked. And we had how many participants? <laughs> I lost count. How many were there? Ten. Ten. I thought six, maybe. I don't know. Oh, you're kidding. <laughs> it was, oh, well. there, was a, there was a rugby match on it. The whole thing. It was after yeah. hours, and there was, a, there was a rugby match on it. <clears throat> oh, out. It was Ramadan. Yeah, but Booth oh, flew in. Wow. Boothana flew in from Kuwait. She came on down for it. So oh, we, had, we had three of us on stage, and we had it all projected. And uh, Mike, it was actually people in my department came. Uh, so mm -hmm. only a few of my colleagues, but still uh you know it was a big thing so that was global learn day was actually that was free and that was actually before mm. uh the web is an action online convergence so very rare to have such a thing but anyway ours was when we actually called a conference which we organized uh and had proposals and things like that so mm -hmm. it was the first one i'm sure that you didn't need a credit card to come along and here we are now, and I, the, the smells from the kitchen are getting really powerful in here. I don't know if you can smell them where you are. I can't even smell it. I can smell some house. morning coffee, maybe. Ah, uh -uh, you must be getting it from Nina's house. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no coffee here. I only drink coffee once a week, and it was yesterday. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm going to do an outro. Right. Uh, this so, is Vance Stevens. In Malaysia, talking to Michael Coughlin in Adelaide, talking to Lane Marshall in Long Island. White, right? no, White Plains, New York. White Plains. Uh -oh. White Plains yeah. is not Long Island. Okay. You, no, only work, in, you work in Long Island. No, I work in I work in Westchester County, but the name of the university is Long Island University. Duh. But I'm not on Long Island oh, at all, okay. ever. I never go there. <laughs> oh, okay. my cousin lives in White Plains. <laughs> And Nina's in Maryland. Okay. Just down the street from Donald Trump. There you are. Hmm. Oh, well. So who's sneaking those people with COVID-19 into his, I mean, we're all, we've almost got him. You know, it's like the, the briefcase is <laughs> under the fewer of uh, they, you know? they, they call it bracketing. <laughs> <laughs> they, they almost got Mike Pence. You got to get Pence too, because you know you don't want to get lose Trump and. I know. Pence. Just imagine if we get both of them out of there. Nancy Pelosi will be president. <laughs> oh, it's the the strategy is becoming apparent. Okay, listen, guys, this is all being all right. recorded, so you all know right. we'll hear from the NSA in the morning. <laughs> okay, uh, May tenth.
2020, and this is Learning Together, Talon 14, Learning Together 459, believe it or not. Wow, 459 episodes. Okay, four six nice tomorrow. Work. So, <laughs> all right, bye bye. See you bye. tomorrow, baby. Web hats. I never can't find the recording, but it says recording up here. You don't hit that, you hit the one down here. Okay. And more. It's under more. Stop recording. I got it. Bye bye.